guys, welcome to another exciting episode of LJ's Garage. Behind me is a 2017 BMW M6. This one is a competition package, so as you can imagine, I'm beyond excited. If you're new to the channel or anything, I'm a huge BMW fan, and whenever I get a chance to jump on any one of these cars, I gladly take that chance. And so, stay tuned. We're gonna walk around this car, talk about this car, and I'm gonna give you some of my driving thoughts on the BMW M6, and uh, it's gonna be a good time. I might end up trading the M3 for one of these. I don't know, we'll find out. So stay tuned guys. So this version of the M6 was released back in 2011, or unveiled I should say. It hit the markets in about 2012. There are a couple different options, features, and all that good stuff which we'll dive into further. If you're on the market for these, be on the lookout. So the F12 is gonna be the convertible version of this one. Not a huge fan of, but to each their own. And then there's the F13, which is the coupe. This is the best version of it. Some would argue that the next version, the F06, or the Grand Coupe, is actually the best, best, best version. But I'm gonna stick with the coupe and say that I love this thing. And if I were to spend the money, this is where I'd spend it on. BMW has always had a thing for taking wolves and putting them in sheep's clothing and then disguising them as normal everyday cars and you know you want something that you can go to the grocery store and then drop off the kids hit the track which we'll talk about the track discussion later but this kind of does everything and it does everything pretty damn well this is built on a similar architecture to the M5 but it's just a little bit of a shorter wheelbase and what I love about this is just the proportions everything on this car is beautifully done and I know there's a big argument, a lot of people will say BMWs are uninspired, you know, there's not a whole lot of creativity into these designs. I think this is the car that changes a lot of people's minds because, especially for 100,000, it better be a head turner. And this does a damn good job. Unfortunately, in 2018, well, it depends how you look at it. Some people love the 8 Series, which is actually the successor to this. So no more M6, it's all about the M8, and that's a whole different beast of a car, but pretty similar in its being and its genes and genetics and all of that good stuff. So I'm not too disappointed that the M6 is gone because the M8 is fantastic. Starting with the front end of the M6, let me just pause for a second, gorgeous. It's got a redesigned front end as a 2015. So again, this is a 2017. So they did a little bit of a minor facelift. It was so minor, I won't even get into all the details about that, but that's gonna be the LCI and You'll see that if you're shopping around, that basically means that BMW did a mid-cycle refresh. Usually there's quite a bit of noticeable features, but really it's just headlights, you know, LEDs, changing things like that. It was very minor stuff that really did make a huge difference on this car. Overall, from 2012 to 2018, the car pretty much remained virtually the same. On the interior, they did update a couple things with the iDrive system. That's really the biggest thing that I've noticed. Back to the front end of this, you'll notice it's got a little bit of a different setup. Um, you know, the kidney grill is a little bit different. Uh, this one does have a lip, which is, you know, an option that you can get from the factory, but most people don't pay BMW that extra money for a lip. So you can get aftermarket options and they add a nice little sporty touch to an already pretty sporty car. You'll notice that the design is optimal for breathing. And so you've got vents, you've got everything set up on this front end to keep this car cool and make sure that there's plenty of air available to those twin turbos sitting under the hood, which we'll get into that here. Yeah, let's do that right now. A lot of people were kind of disappointed when BMW said, you know what, we're also gonna add a turbo to the M6, which was a big deal on all the other M cars. And so when they finally decided to do that, everyone was like, no, not the M6 as well. So what they did was they went ahead and they did a 4.4 liter V8 and added twin turbos. So there's two of them, two whole turbos. And, you know, this thing makes some power. Una. Baby. Dos. This motor makes 600 horsepower and 516 foot-pounds of torque. As for transmission options, you get two different Dos. options. Number one is a seven-speed dual clutch which is a phenomenal, fantastic option choice. That's what I actually have in my M3. And over the years, I've grown to love BMW's dual clutches. The second option, which a lot of you will agree is also a fantastic option, is a six-speed manual. This doesn't really belong in this car, in my opinion. I feel like the dual clutch kind of serves it a better, it kind of serves it better than the six-speed, but to each their own, just know that that option does exist. And overall, this motor and those transmission options work very well together. 
When it comes to gas mileage, if you're a Prius lover or an environmentally friendly person, you might want to look away um, or turn your mic down or volume down, whatever it may be. But city, 14. And highway, a reasonable 20 miles per gallon. So if you're all about fuel efficiency and saving the trees and the planets and the polar bears, this is not the car for you. With any competition package, there's a couple things that you get. Um, both in performance and on the exterior with cosmetics. The first thing is going to be normally on the M6 You'd get 19 inch wheels. The M6 comp gives you 20 inch wheels and they're very nice They're very deep dish and they're very much needed because behind those are some massive massive rotors If I were to guess I'd say they're like 16 inch rotors, which are huge Fantastically huge, but does that equate to a lot of stopping power on this thing if you don't get the carbon ceramic ones? That's a whole nother debate on the M6. But I'll say this much. This has pretty good stopping power. I personally would not track this car. It's just a little bit too heavy. I'm not saying it's not nimble, but you do feel the weight of this car. And that might be coming from, you know, a 3,600, 3,800 pound M3 and getting into this 4,400 pound beast, you kind of feel the weight. What this car reminds me of is this, have you guys ever seen that video of the bigger guy who does a backflip and everyone's like, oh, this guy can't do a backflip. Well, watch this video, it's kind of like that. Obviously, at a $100,000 starting price, you know, right around that ballpark, you're gonna get cool things like comfort access, so you can just lock the doors from here, unlock them this way, pretty easy stuff. Side mirrors do fold, and uh, yeah. Overall, the beauty just stays with this car. Amazing body lines, frameless windows, big, huge, massive coupe doors. I mean, there's really not a whole lot to hate, and there's just so much to love about the looks and styling and everything on this M6. Make sure that you guys are out there living life, but make sure that you stay humble out there in the world. Speaking of humble, special thank you to my buddy Steven for letting me borrow this M6 for a sexy, sexy, spectacular video. Be sure to check out his photography page down in the comment section below and follow him on Instagram, all that good stuff. Pretty good photographer and even better car driver and owner for owning one of these cars. But you know, back to the scheduled programming. You'll notice that this does not have a sunroof, but what it does have instead is a carbon fiber roof. No, it's not wrapped. No, it's not aftermarket. None of that stuff. BMW from the factory fits this car with a sexy carbon fiber roof. And I know I've said sexy a lot with this car, but let's just say like Aston Martins are gorgeous, all that good stuff. But this, this is a head turner. Now on the butt end of the M6, this thing is, as I always like to say, thick. And on top of that, you've got the M6 competition badge. So there's no mistaking when you pull up behind one of these that you're about to get the sauce. The other thing that you'll notice is that these are aftermarket Akrapovic exhaust tips and an exhaust system. However, if you do get the competition package, you do get black exhaust tips from the factory and you get the BMW nicer, sexier sounding exhaust. This sounds really fantastic, so take a listen to this. It's not as good as the V10, but let me just say that this V8 twin turbo holds its own in the ring. Now that you guys have heard that masterpiece, let's get back to the practicality and functionality of the M6. You would think that there's not much cargo space to be had, but let me go ahead and pop this trunk for you guys. And this has the nice little cool little flicky thing here so you can get in the trunk easy as that and this is what it looks like back here plenty of room for your kids your dogs bodies whatever you put back there i'm just saying that if i had to go pick up groceries i would love to have 600 horsepower to go do so because you know you buy ice cream and it starts to melt you got to hurry up and get home quick sorry officer ice cream melts i had to hurry up and speed it makes sense to me. I don't know about you guys. If that isn't a good view, I don't know what is. Now this is one of the best spec M6s I've ever come across. Red interior, white exterior, black rims. I know a lot of people think black is not that cool of rim color choice anymore, but I disagree. Carbon fiber roof, everything just looks amazing in this thing. I'll give you guys a quick little tour of some of the features, but overall, it's no different than most of the BMWs from this generation. BMW kind of sticks to that same recipe of, you know, keep it classy, keep it simple. Your seats are like 13,000 million way adjustable. 
and you just cannot beat this red leather. On this left side, you've got your lighting controls, all familiar stuff, very simple setup. And watch this, when I start the car, the steering wheel comes down, and those tweeters, they just come popping up. To give you guys a quick little tour, in the top half, you'll notice that those are analog gauges. Down at the bottom is all digital for customization as you're driving. So it is kind of like a midway to the future type of setup. And then over here, you've got this big, huge display. I'll turn that on in a second and go over a couple things. But down here, pretty standard BMW affair. You've got your dual climate control, heated and cool seats. Cool seats are nice on your bum which I really, really like. That feels pretty good whenever the fans kick on and stuff is what I mean. Um, then you've got your dual clutch transmission. So this is pretty straightforward. You kind of flick to move whichever way you want and it just goes back to neutral position every time. So very simple BMW stuff, but it takes a little bit of getting, getting used to if you're you know, not used to that at all. On the left-hand side, you've got your traction control off. You've got your engine tuning, so you can go from sport, sport plus comfort. And then you've got your suspension tuning, so you can ride you can adjust the ride and the dampers how you like. And if you go for the M Sport competition, then that allows you to have a little bit more different feel than you would on a regular M6 without the competition package. Steering is the same thing. You can adjust how heavy you want the steering response to be. And then right here, this one always throws off a lot of people, but what it is is just how aggressive you want the car to shift, how fast you want the car to shift, and you can fully adjust all of that. That's just gonna be your parking sensors and buttons and back up all that good stuff. Nothing really fun to talk about. On this right side, you've got your iDrive controls, which we'll get into that in just a second once I turn the car on. Electronic parking brake. You do get a little bit of storage in here. Um, other than that, and then this does lock. You got your glove box over there. As you can see, carbon fiber everywhere and beautiful Bang & Olufsen sound system. If there's anything I love more than Harman Kardon, it's Bang & Olufsen. On this headliner, it's nice and nice Alcantara, or Alcantara if you're super, super fancy. But overall, let me go ahead and turn this on and you guys can see this little thing pop up right here. I think that's such a cool thing. Boom, and just like that, you got sound. Main menu, so main menu, pretty simple. Media and radio, communications, navigation, go to notifications, there's all sorts of stuff. Pretty simple setup overall. Um, if you go into your iDrive settings, this is where you can check weather and use your different apps. There's all sorts of fun stuff, nothing really to share. I am gonna pause and talk about the M1 and M2 buttons. Most people that have been in any of the M cars, they know what these buttons do. But just a quick summary, basically you can store your settings to however you want. So right now, uh, Steven's got his setup to where you click on M1 and I click M1 and what'll happen is I have to hit confirm twice because he turns off the traction control. And, but you'll see down at the bottom, let me get you zoomed in there, Sport Plus, Sport Plus, Sport Plus. This is what he calls the full send mode. And then you can store this and save this however you want. So his M2, he clicks that. And now it's Sport Plus on the engine tuning, comfort suspension and sport steering. So you can pretty much set it however you want. Pretty easy stuff. I love that BMW gives you that option. So whenever a Mustang wants to get the sauce, you push that button, handle the business, push M2, back to normal driving. And you'll see that's what the heads up display looks like. I enjoy having it. I can't live without my heads up display now. And at any time, if you ever want to turn off the heads up display, just push this button. I love that BMW gives you the option to do it from there, which I would never turn it off, but some people don't like it. Something else that I find pretty awesome is that BMW lets you pick and choose how you want the heat distributed on your butt and all that good stuff, which is pretty fun and nice, you know, pretty cool thing that they offer. On the left side of the steering wheel and on the column, you'll notice that you've got your heated steering wheel button right here. And this is an electronically controlled column, so you have all these adjustments done from there. On this door, you'll notice that it's just your normal window controls, your side mirrors and all that good stuff. Then you do have the option to open up and close your rear little shade. And I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like like so and again this does have back seats which I'll show you guys how to get to in a second so you can slide this forward which then will allow you to get to this little trigger button thing here and then once you've got enough room just do a little contortionist type thing and really there's not much room back here it's not exactly comfortable by any means and yeah i'll show you guys what kind of room i'm working with it's not fun okay so here are my hot dogs and as you can see if i oh god 
that's too much. So now this is set for my height. I'm 5'9". That's what it looks like right there. And then this is how much room I have back here. It's doable in an emergency, you know, you gotta pick up your drunk friends or whatnot. But if you were to put the seat all the way back, yeah, ain't nobody sitting back here. But look at the details back here, just amazing. Great sound system, no rear vents, no nothing like that. But everything in this car is just fantastic. And you just touch everything, it feels good. Like this is leather and it holds up very well. I mean, this car is a few years old, but I've got nothing to complain about. One thing I miss is when they had the old three series, they used to hand you your seat belts. Miss those days, because as my shoulders gotten older, you know, it kind of sucks to have to reach but first world problems. Basically in a nutshell, I love the M6. It's a fun, fun, fun car. And not only is it fun, it's elegant, it's sophisticated, it's so grown up, it makes me feel like a real adult. The red interior on this with the white exterior, perfect color combination. It's got everything that I need as far as like creature comforts, heated seats, cool seats. Ooh, I love the cool seats. Um, Overall, just a fantastic car. It's so easy to drive, and you would think with this kind of power number that it would just be like, no, you can't drive this thing realistically, but man, you just hammer it. Man. And like I said, these brakes, they're good enough for just everyday driving. If you're trying to take it to a track, I probably would, uh, you know, I'd need a little bit of an upgrade. But overall, I mean, just fantastic. Uh, handling, like I said, it's not bad. If you're coming from something lighter and more nimble, you'll notice the difference. But overall, you'll be able to get in this thing and throw it around, and the traction control is forgiving. It gives you just enough slip with that MDM mode, and it's not so, like, crazy. It's like, so this reminds me a lot of, like, the Dodge Challenger, and I know that sounds crazy, but if you've driven a Challenger and driven this, you'll be like, okay, that kind of makes sense. It's the big car feeling, but this is more like, you know, the Winnie the Pooh Bear memes. This is like the fancy, sophisticated Challenger. And then there's the American version of the Challenger. And that's what it is. It's just hit the throttle, back end fishtails, and you just go forward. There's not much for cornering and handling. That's not what that car is made for at all. But this is taking that same thing. Power, weight, size, but then you're making it athletic. So this is like, you know, NFL linebacker type thing, you know, big, but those guys can move. Driving it around the city and everything like a normal person, I don't feel the weight and I just love this. Like I'll go from the M2 mode to M1 and just chill and just cruise and it'll be like sport. You know, it's usually where I like to live. I don't like the sport plus, it's a little bit too artificial for me, but sport is pretty good. Comfort is a little too soft. So sport's usually where I like it. And I'll just live with that and I'll just have a good time. I'll drive around and I'll feel good. And I'll feel like this is a car that I can manage. The one thing I'll say is that it does make me want more power because my M3 is only 425 horsepower, whereas this is, you know, 600, but it doesn't feel like 600. It's such a well-behaved 600, but you get in an M5 and that's like scary, five, a scary 600. And one of the best lines I ever heard about the M5 versus this is that the M5 is like getting eaten by a tiger and then this is like getting eaten by a tame domesticated tiger. So still both horrible and fun, depending on how you look at it. But this is just an elegant, sophisticated, well-crafted beast. And I'm not saying the M5 isn't. The M5 is also one in the same, but different. All the M cars are kind of different flavors and mixtures of the same recipe. They just kind of tweak a little bit, add a little paprika to this one and a little salt to this one, a little bit of sugar in this one. You know, whatever, you get what I'm saying. But it's so easy to drive this thing and I love that, you know? But it's a lot of, that's one of the things that people complain about with the modern M cars is that they are so easy to drive, they are so chill, they are so relaxed. You know, you should be able to get in an M car and it's supposed to scare the crap out of you. This one, yeah, if you turn the control, traction control all the way off, do all those things, it will guaranteed, to, it's guaranteed to scare the crap out of you. However, if you don't do any of those things and you drive around and just brag to people you have 600 horsepower and all this torque, but don't do anything with it, you know, 
it's a super manageable car. I wouldn't be surprised if someone could throw snow tires on this and drives this year round. I really wouldn't be surprised. BMW has some of the best traction control ever. And in this car, when you put it in MDM and you drive and you hit it hard, even though the traction control light flickers, it won't cut your power or your, it won't, you know, change your timing of your fuel so that way you lose power. It just lets you have it all and it just keeps letting you do it just in a little bit of a wider safety margin or a less of a safety margin than full traction control on. As I said earlier, the fuel consumption on this is pretty much bad, but you know, you don't buy a car like this expecting to save on fuel costs. And on top of that, if you're buying a car like this, nine times out of 10, you can afford the fuel that it costs to run this thing, brand new especially. Now, not a lot of people wanna take care of a 4.4 liter twin turbo V8. So these cars have depreciated quite a bit and they're still beautiful. I think they've aged well. I know some people say this look isn't that, you know, timeless, but I disagree. I think that this car looks fantastic. Um, in a couple years, whenever the new M's start rolling out and like you already have the M8 out, which already makes this car look a little bit older, but that's what the M8 is supposed to be. It's the successor, it's modern, it's, it's everything that this car would have been if they just kept the M6 badge on it. The way it delivers power is a little funny. The V8 is a smaller V8. You know, it's not any 6.2 liter V8 or anything like that. It's just a little baby 4.4, but that gets you off the line. It gets you going. And then about 23, 2500 RPM when those turbos kick in, then you're like, wow, there's some power and it just keeps going. Um, I don't know what the top speed on this is off the top of my head. I would say that, you know, it's obviously 155 limited, but without any governors or anything, I guarantee this car is probably in the 200 territory. I could see this car hitting 200 miles an hour and easily. It takes a little bit of getting used to with learning the dual clutch. If you're used to driving a manual, you basically have to kind of learn the power band, which you have to do with any car, you know, for sure. But the thing is with this, having the turbos, you're like, oh, naturally aspirated V8 feel. But then you have to quickly remind yourself that no, when the turbos kick in, you're gonna get a whole lot more power. And so if you're not careful in some of these turns, I could easily see things going sideways, no pun intended, for you. What that means is that you have to be on top of it when you're driving around. You have to make sure that you are aware of all the weight that you have on that back end. And when you're whipping it around, you know, just be ginger with it until you're familiar with the car. And then you can start sliding it around. Overall, I mean, it's got fat, meaty tires on the back, so there's plenty of grip. The competition package is the best way to enjoy this. Suspension isn't too rough. It's definitely sporty to the max, but I'm familiar with that kind of suspension. So if you're buying this and you want an eight series level of comfort or a seven series level of comfort, well, this probably isn't the suspension you wanna be riding around with. And I'll tell you that, you know, these turn signals are also rather annoying. So BMW, I'm so glad that you finally ditched these turn signals and went to the normal ones because there was no reason to not use the same turn signals the rest of the world is using. And that's all I've got for you guys on the 2017 BMW M6 competition. Let me just say I love this car and I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode. Be sure to hit that like button, comment button, subscribe button, all that good stuff. Let me know what you guys think is the best M car. Am I wrong? Am I right? Is this thing really that beautiful? Regardless of what your thoughts are, share them with me and stay tuned for next week's episode. Peace out, stay healthy, be happy, stuff.